Hello students! For today, I will be discussing to you the concepts behind Mendelian inheritance. This topic is about a type of biological inheritance that follows the principles originally proposed by Gregor Mendel during the year 1865 to 1866. But let's know more about Gregor Mendel. Gregor Mendel is an Austrian monk and also known as the father of genetics. Genetics is the science which deals with how genes control the biological characteristics of an organism. Gregor Mendel, through his work on pea plants, discovered the fundamental laws of inheritance. He deduced that the genes come in pairs and are inherited as distinct units, one from each parent. Mendel tracked the segregation of parental genes and their appearance in the offspring as dominant or recessive traits. He used the pea plant to observe the traits that can be inherited from a parent pea plant, just like the flower color, plant height, seed color, seed shape, pod color, pod shape, and flower position. Based on the experiment conducted by Gregor Mendel, there will only be two possible traits that can be inherited by the offspring. That's why he came up with the idea about the dominant trait and recessive traits. In accordance to his experiment, purple color of flower, being tall plant, having a yellow seed color, round shaped seed, green pod color, inflated pod shape, and actual position of flower are all dominant traits. While white color of flower, being short plant, having a green seed color, wrinkled seed shape, yellow pod color, Constricted pod shape and terminal position of flowers are considered to be recessive traits. In order to understand further the concept of dominant and recessive trait, let's deepen our understanding about Mendelian inheritance. The inheritance of a trait is determined by a factor called gene. Gene is a unit of heredity and can be found in the chromosomes, which is passed from a parent to offspring and is held to determine some traits and characteristics. There are times when the inherited trait may not be observable in an organism but could be observed in future generations. Any organism is a byproduct of both its genetic makeup and the environment. To understand this in detail, we must first appreciate some basic genetic vocabulary and concepts. A gene can exist in different forms across organisms. These different forms are known as alleles. The exact fixed position on the chromosome that contains a particular gene is known as a locus. Based on the picture, the locus or the position of the gene for flower color are in the exact same location on both chromatids that results in the formation of a homologous pair of chromosomes. Homologous pair of chromosomes can also be considered if both chromatids has the same length of arms, centromere location, and position of genes in the locus. A diploid organism either inherits two copies of the same allele or one copy of two different alleles from their parents. If an individual inherits two identical alleles, their genotype is said to be homozygous. However, if they possess two different alleles, their genotype is classed as heterozygous. Alleles of the same gene are either homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive. A dominant allele will always be expressed over a recessive allele. The term phenotype refers to the observable physical properties of an organism. This includes the organism's appearance, development, and behavior. An organism's phenotype is determined by its genotype, which is the set of genes the organism carries as well as by the environmental influences upon these genes. Let's look at a classic example, eye color. A gene encodes eye color. In this example, the allele is either brown or blue with one inherited from the mother and the other inherited from the father. The brown allele is dominant and represented by uppercase letter B while the blue allele is recessive, represented by lowercase letter b. If the child inherits two different alleles, it will be heterozygous. Then, 
they will have brown eyes. For the child to have blue eyes, they must be homozygous for the blue eye allele. To summarize, the gene is located in the locus of the chromosome that carries a specific allele. It can be eye color gene, hair color gene, or any other types of allele. And this gene will code a specific trait or phenotype. As an example, for the color of the eye, it can be brown. And for hair color, it can be hazel. Based on the findings from the genetic process, Mendel proposed loss of inheritance. The key principles of Mendelian inheritance are summed up by Mendel's three laws, law of dominance, law of segregation, and law of independent assortment. The first law is law of dominance. It says here that a dominant trait exists when a dominant allele masks the expression of the recessive allele. A recessive trait exists if the dominant allele is not present and has a pair of recessive alleles. Mendel's law of dominance states that, in a heterozygous, one trait will conceal the presence of another trait for the same characteristics. Rather than both alleles contributing to a phenotype, the dominant allele will be expressed exclusively. Based on the table, either it is homozygous dominant or heterozygous dominant, it will only express tall phenotype. But, if it is homozygous recessive, it is the only chance that it will express short phenotype. Second law is the law of segregation. Law of segregation states that alleles segregate randomly into gametes. When gametes are formed, each allele of one parent segregates randomly into the gametes, such that half of the parent's gametes carry each allele. In his P experiment, Mendel knows that cross-parent plants have one tall allele that dominates the short allele, causing it to grow tall. To get the short plants from these parents, the alleles from the short and tall plants should separate, otherwise the generation of short plants is not possible. During gametogenesis, the alleles for a gene separate. Each gamete then has equal chances of being obtained by a gamete. Based on the diagram, the sex chromosome of both parents undergo meiosis, a type of cell division. During meiosis, the alleles of the parents separate and can be obtained randomly by their offspring. This idea gives us the opportunity of acquiring different characteristics or traits from our parents that makes us unique from our siblings or from one another. The third law is the law of independent assortment. The principle of independent assortment describes how different genes independently separate from one another when reproductive cells develop. Independent assortment of genes and their corresponding traits was first observed by Gregor Mendel in 1865 during his studies of genetics in pea plants. With Mendel's work on several crossbreeds of pea plants, he observed that the height of the plant, color, and shape of the seed had no effect in the inheritance of one another. Mendel derived a conclusion that the different traits are inherited independently. And through that, thank you for listening. I hope that you have learned something from this video. Our next topic to be discussed is about monohybrid cross.